Good morning, everyone. It's time once again for our weekly visit with Dan Yegi from Ag Performance of Buffalo Center in Ormsby. Good morning, Danny boy. Rove, good morning. How are we doing this morning? Nice, cold morning. You know, a couple weeks ago, people were crying for snow, and I think they overcried for snow now, didn't they? <laughs> I agree. I miss my snowmobile, don't you, Rice? You know, I can safely say I've never had a snowmobile. (laughs) That was way back when. We haven't had snowmobiles forever, but yeah, I'm getting older, so no, I don't have the deeper for snowmobiles like I used to. Oh, I can understand that. In fact, growing up, I I used to hate, to tell you how warm-blooded I am here, Dan, I used to hate snowmobile pants or snowmobile suits. (laughs) You get too hot, too big of a guy. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, they put a big guy into a tiny snowmobile suit. That's what happens, right? <laughs> that does. You bet. The you... opposite. I'm always freezing, so I like it hot. I, you know, I've wondered why your offices are always so hot in the summertime. Now I know why. Now that's the girls. <laughs> oh, that's the girls. Okay, yeah. okay. It's where the girls they they freeze, so okay. we got to warm in here. All right, there you go. Well, anyway, our topic of discussion of this week here: cash flows. We're into income tax season once again here, and um, the last time we talked about cash flows, uh, things were pretty tight in that department. Are, are they still tight in the cash flows here, Dan? Right, we're seeing it the same. I hate to keep talking about this, but I think it's a big topic that is kind of not talked about among people. I know in the sales thing, uh, everybody is, you know, positive, talking about looking forward, what they're going to do for next year, but really abling to write down that order and, and or make a payment or decide. I don't think a lot of guys are really at ease with that yet, and I don't blame them one bit. The simple reason is, you know, a lot of them got their green left over from last year. So they got last year's line of credits at 8 to 10% interest, wherever it's at. And some people might have it lower than that. They're concerned on that. And then now to buy this year's inputs, they have to get another line of credit at 8 to 10%. Well, that's a lot of interest that they got to put out there. And I know a lot of my friends in the seed chemical industry, everybody's saying it is way slower this year than it has the last couple of years, which I can understand why, and I'm not at all negative on it. But the big thing is, what can we do to relieve some of this? And that's what guys look at the cash flow. How can I change it, maintain the yields, and still, you know, make the money at least hopefully come to break even or make the money, because I don't think there's going to be enough federal crop dollars to cover everybody's break even, so they're going to be kind of left open. If we got a bad crop, we could lose money. And, and the first thing I always mention, and I know I'm a little different a lot of other guys, but is seed corn. You know, conventional corn is approximately $60 cheaper than biotech corn, unless you're getting a real deal. You know, one line item to you is a $60 difference. And you got 200 bushel of corn. That's basically, I think, right at 30 cents, you can deduct off your break even. Chemicals this year, if you really look, like Roundup Liberty is way cheaper. One thing I'm doing on bean programs with my guys, put no pre down. And the simple reason a pre a lot of times in the real cold soils will slow your emergence. And I, I have kind of mixed results if pre's really work or don't work especially when it's really dry, they don't. You can just take Roundup and a little bit of list right when it's two, three inches tall and the fields get woolly, wipe it out for about five bucks. It's all it's going to cost you. And then the second time you come in with Liberty in the list, it's probably going to cost you 15. You can do a whole program for 20 bucks on a chemical program on soybeans. Those are some of the things to look at. Another one I'm going to do one more rice is for fertilizer. If your P1s on your fertilizer or in your soil samples are at least 30, 35 average, I think you could actually skip your MAP or your DAP, your P. And if your K on your base saturation, your K percentage is above a two and a half, three, you might be able to skip on K. And you can still get high yields. And you're not going to move those points down very, very slowly, even on high yields. You just don't want to skip fertilizer for many, many years. But if you got a few farms that are really high, you can look at that. You're not going to hurt your yield. You just don't want to cut on your sulfur or your nitrogen. You need that from year to year. 
But that's a couple of pointers guys can think about. You know, I'm not saying they're going to do it, but they can get their cash flow lower, and I don't believe it's going to hurt their their yield in the end. All right, if anyone has any questions or comments about anything you and I talk about on a weekly basis here, Dan, how'd they get a hold of you? Call us at A Performance at 641-562-2370, Rice. 641-562-2370. It it gets easier and easier for us to say this every week, doesn't it? It's too easy, Rice. (laughs) Well, Dan, have a great week. We'll talk again next week. Thanks, Rice. You have a great week, too. We will indeed. And that's going to wrap up our weekly visit with Dan Yegi from Ag Performance of Buffalo Center and Ormsby.